everyone, Michelle Markey with Medina Domestic Arts Studio. And today I wanna to talk about some of the latest little paints I have created. Uh, they're kind of a pilot program. And it's because the product, some of the base that I'm using for, let me pull this out. Uh, there we go, you can probably see that, Prism Pour. Um, I just found out yesterday that um, because of a shortage of the deep base that's behind this, uh, she is not going to make this probably for another year. So whatever I've created for sale is going to be just about it. However, never fear, um, there are alternatives for me to use uh, outside of the prism pour that I'll be able to recreate the same colors with. She's got this, all these pigments available in powdered form, and I'll just have to work a little harder to create the same paints. So don't give up um, when you see this, that these are the only ones that are gonna be available. Um, I will be creating more, but it is a pilot program. It's basically going to be to see how many people really like the paints, um, personally, I think they're so easy to use, and that's what I want to show you today is just a quick little demo on these little sets of Christmas ornaments that I have here. Um, now, I've already done this one right here, and let me just move this down so that you can see this. There we go. Um, perfect. Now, I want to work on this one right here and just show you um, this is some of the green that I have here. Now, when I'm working with really tiny areas, oh, and let me say one other thing. These are all DTFs. These are DTFs that I actually ironed on this. I don't know if you can see it. It's got a bit of a tone-on-tone -tone pattern. It's also got some metallic sparklies in here, so it's the perfect Christmas fabric for it. But this is not an embroidery pattern, so... I'm starting to carry more and more DTFs. Uh, a lot of people have been quite happy with them. Um, we'll do more about DTFs and applying them later on, but now I wanna show you how to paint on them. So I've got a bit of this green right here and I'm working on the center. And what I really have found works well are these nail tools or dot tools. They're sold as both. And the reason I really like them is because you can do this. You can dip, get just a little bit on the head, and you can come in here and really work a very small area. See that? Let me do that one more time on this side so the camera can catch. And I'm sorry, I've got it on a stand, but um, it's hard for me to zoom in. So um, I, will, I will do that later. Um, in another video so that you can see the details. This is just kind of a catch-all general video to talk about some of this new stuff and just to give you a, a quick demo on it. So see how nice and easy that is? Now I will zoom in actually a little bit. Let me move this over slightly. Let me just make sure I don't move anything over. Okay. Um, and the reason I want to show you this is why do I like these little things? Well, if I were trying to get here in the center with a brush, one of the things that's going to happen with a DTF in particular, there's no stitch line to stop me from going on to the black. And I don't know if you can see this, but I got a little bit of the gold glitter on there earlier. Now, do I mind? Nah, not really. But with something like this green, which is semi-opaque, you don't really want to get it on there in case it dries. And then what you would have to do if you're going to correct that is you'd have to go back over the dried paint with a black marker in order to kind of revive the, um, the, the, the line itself. Uh, so instead, I think it's easier to use these dot tools simply because you just have more precision and... They come in different sizes, and <laughs> this gets even better as the more I think about it. Um, you know what? They don't wear out like brush heads do. And I'll tell you something else. Uh, brushes, I don't know what's going on in the art world, but brushes have gotten outrageously expensive. And so if I can find y'all a different tool 
that number one, doesn't really wear out, and number two, affects the same look that you're trying to achieve, and frankly, is by far cheaper, well, I'm gonna tell you about it. <clears throat> so that's what this is all about, and um, also just, just to, to show you how easy that is. Um, so I'm gonna let that dry. Now, the thing that I did, and I'm, I'm always upfront about what I, how I did this, I'm not working with on this stuff right here. This is a as a combo. I mixed the Prism Pour acrylic paint with about a ratio of 25% fabric medium to about 60% acrylic paint, and then I used about for the remainder, which is what is that? 15%? Yes. 15% paint thinner. And the reason why is that often acrylic paints are very thick and it sometimes is very hard to apply them in small areas like this. Now I get my paint thinner from Pro Chemical and Dye, which of course many of you know already is my favorite place to get my paint chemicals. And they do have a fabric paint thinner for sale on their website. If you can't find it or if you have any questions about it, Comment below and I'll, I'll put you onto the right place. But it really is necessary for a lot of these paints because they're they're very opaque to begin with and I've kind of now made them semi-opaque, but they're certainly easier to use. Now I'm going to grab a hold of one of mine. It's called, let's see here if we can get this so that you can see the it's poinsettia. It's this red right here that you see, and let's use it around the center here so that you can see it. Now, uh, here's a little trick. I'm off camera shaking my paint up really good, which you have to do with all these mixtures, y'all. You've got to shake or stir. Um, I'm trying to put these in, hang on, I'm gonna get it, in wide mouth containers like this for a couple of reasons. One, if there's a lot of sparkle like this one has, or a lot of metallic, you can kind of probably see that in the cap, um, the metallic tends to fall to the bottom. So what you're going to want to do is, you know, get yourself, excuse me, I'm, I've got crumbs on here. I don't want to wipe them and accidentally get my white fabric dirty, which is, again, a trick for all of y'all. Do not, do not, do not wipe your hand across fabric. It, I'll guarantee you, you will, you will create some kind of mess and you won't be able to get it out. <clears throat> anyway, back to the metallics. The, the mica, which is primarily what is used in a lot of these paints, is very heavy, tends to fall to the bottom, and sometimes not even shaking will do this. You'll have to actually end up stirring. I go off to Amazon. I buy these really inexpensive metallic or metal spoons to do my stirring. They fit inside the jars, and that way you're guaranteed to get all that nice sparkle up because I personally think that's what makes this stuff. Okay, the other reason I like getting the, um, the, the wider mouth bottles is because actually I can do this. Let me scooch this up a bit. I can use the what, whatever's in the cap to actually come in here and place my color and what I'll normally do when I'm doing this in person, let me show you, but I don't wanna do this over my fabric because I'm paranoid. I'll normally sit the cap on top like that. So, oops, can you see that? Let me bring this down. Set it down like that on top of the bottle so that I can keep the paint that's in there from actually uh, drying out and developing a skin, which this will. Now, if I do have it off camera the way I do, to be frank with you, I take another bottle, like something like this that's bigger, and I'll just set it on top of the bottle while I work with the cap. Just these little tricks that you learn from doing this a lot. And this is all I'm doing. Do you see how these little nice ball heads, they, now you have to dip in pretty frequently but that's okay. I think that gives you better control this way. 
and you can see I'm just moving the color and, and it's, it keeps it so easy. I can actually feel a tiny bit of resistance against the ink, which by the way, that's all DTFs are. They're ink with an adhesive on the back that the heat marries it to the fabric. And if you do it right, and now, boy, I'm gonna do a whole video on how you can screw up a DTF and how to prevent that because uh, yours truly has made quite a number of mistakes with DTFs being too impatient and peeling them before they've actually cooled. Um, so there you have it. There's a bunch of, I mean, me babbling into the phone as usual, but trying to pass on as many nuggets of information about doing this as possible. Let me zoom back out again. So you can see this is plain and simple. I, um, I'm actually have a bunch more ornaments that are um, coming in next week. By the way, if you are going, if you are in the Dallas area, I will be at the Plano Show August 9th through the 10th, I believe is the dates. It's next week, next Friday and Saturday. Um, their show is always a great show. I encourage you all to attend if you haven't been there before. Um, lots and lots of good vendors, lots and lots of good quilts. And the gals at the Plano Quilt Guild really know how to put on a great show. Anyway, <clears throat> that's it for today. As always, if you have any questions or concerns or you just want to chat, post your comments below and I will respond. And as always, thanks for watching.